Welcome back, True Seeker. Gonna handle another flat earther misconception. Aaron writes that rivers and winds changing direction is impossible on a spherical earth. And I've seen flat earthers write this before. I've seen them make videos arguing this. They're saying that because the earth is spinning a certain direction, it should create a wind force that blows in that direction. Kind of like if you're on a motorcycle and you're going 100 miles per hour down the road and you got long hair, you know, you're going to see your hair blowing back. But at the same time, if you got long hair and you're going 100 miles per hour in a car, your hair is not going to be blowing anywhere because you're in a contained environment. You're going to see that force of moving 100 miles per hour. If you crash into something, however, then you're going to feel the force of 100 miles per hour. But the thing is, the Earth is essentially a giant automobile, a contained environment, and it's in continual orbit of the sun. So we're not feeling the force of the great speed. We're the passenger in the car, you know? And as for rivers going in both directions, some rivers do change the direction they flow. That has everything to do with the geography of the land. Water is flowing down hill, essentially. The direction, the force of the waters with the curvature of the land. It's why the United States, which has the geography of a giant bowl, it's why everything flows towards the middle. You know, if the geography of the United States was this way, everything would flow towards the outside. And over time, rivers can change direction because of the way the land erodes. You know, if the, if, the, if the slope of the river is, you know, at a slight angle going this way, and over time erosion causes in places to change the greater direction of the river to be slightly the other way, then the river will start flowing back that way. And that does happen. You know, land moves over time. Land settles. The earth constantly moving. You know, they say that we used to be one giant continent, Pangaea, and over time it's broken up and these separate landforms. So, again, you guys just have to think. You flat earthers aren't thinking this through all the way. You know, we're not, we're not on an earth that's orbiting that doesn't have a contained environment. We're not an open motorcycle on the road. We're closed in. And it's very easy to understand given a motorcycle versus a car. You know, think about it. You can be driving 20 miles per hour. You can be driving 100 miles per hour. You're not, your wind, hair's not blowing anywhere unless somebody rolls down the windows. Then, then the environment's not contained anymore. So, again, all flat earthers, the reason that they believe the earth is flat is because they don't have enough information. They're not thinking things through all the way. This guy's comment down here is the same thing. You know, he's using the crazy speed argument. The Earth rotating at a thousand miles per hour, given how big it is, you know, in, in relative terms, is not that fast. It's one rotation a day. And this person's been spamming every video I've been making. I know that last night I covered this. I said, imagine a Harlem Globetrotter spins a basketball at a rate of one full rotation per 24 hours. You know, it's very slow. And it's the same thing with the Earth. Just the Earth has a circumference of 25,000 miles around the middle. So that's where the speed is 1,000 miles per hour. And you know, if you, if you go up further on the Earth or lower, where, where the circumference isn't as great, you're not moving as fast. But it's all relative. It's all relative. And again, you're not going to feel the force of the Earth and how fast it's moving unless something impacts it. I mean, if the Earth smashed into something, we'd all be screwed, right? Then we'd feel it. But as long as we're in this seamless orbit, it doesn't matter how fast it's going. It's just all relative. Because we're in this contained, essentially massive vehicle. So, these arguments, I mean, let's just read it out loud and see what it sounds like. Also, rivers and winds change directions. Impossible on a one-way, thousand-mile-per-hour spinning globe. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It's like saying, um, I mean, imagine you had like a, a model river that you built and you're in your car moving. I mean, it, it, if it's flat, let's just say I have a plastic container here, you know, and it's, it's perfectly flat, 
and we're moving 100 miles per hour down the road and I tip the container this way, the water's gonna flow that way. And if I tip it this way, the water's gonna flow that way. We're still moving 100 miles per hour this direction, you know, and it's the same thing on Earth in a contained environment. And, you know, when flat earthers say, how come when I jump in the air, I don't land over here because the Earth's rotating? Again, because you're in a contained environment. Drop your keys in your car, you know? If you, if you have your car, car if you have your keys like this and you're flying down the road and you drop them, the keys aren't going to fly into the back seat. They're going to fall straight down. Contained environment. Let's continue. Thousand mile per hour spinning globe. So many vids, thousands to prove flat earth takes a 50 IQ. Mm. I'm pretty sure that if we measure the IQs of the people duped by the flat earth theory, it's not going to look pretty. And open your eyes and go look at the ocean, Zach. You're not far away. Well, trust me, I've been to the ocean plenty. I see it every day. There's no bulge and it ain't moving except gentle tides. Well, I'm not sure what she means by the bulge. I think she means that it doesn't curve away. You're not going to see it bulge up when it curves away. You're going to see that things disappear beyond the horizon once they get far enough away. You know, the ship that sails away, if you keep the binoculars on it, eventually you're going to be able to see less and less of the base of the ship until you can't see it anymore. It ain't moving except gentle tides. <laughs> well, you know, the, the tide is changing throughout the day. Sometimes it's gentle. At, at certain times there's high tide and it comes in more powerful. Uh, I'll tell you what. The closest I've ever come to dying was from being a young 21-year-old, having too much fun in Mexico, and, you know, being a guy and getting into a challenge that I shouldn't have got in. And I'll never forget it. I had one of these Mexican dudes selling his stuff on the beach who saved my shoes and then helped pull my ass out of the water because what happened was we were drinking, you know, and one of my buddies is like, I bet you you can't swim out to that buoy and back. And I said, well, you do it with me. And him and I had been both drinking. Well, we swam out to the buoy. And when we started to swim back is when the tide started to get strong. And it took forever to swim back because every time the tide comes back, it pulls you back. So you swim all this distance and the water just pulls you right back. So it was like having to swim that distance four times. Plus we've been drinking and it's hot outside. So, you know, by the time I got back to the shore, I could not stand up myself. And neither could he. He had to get help too. We were just exhausted and the water kept knocking us down. Thankfully, this Mexican dude, he put down all of his stuff he was selling, came in, he helped pull us both out. And he saved both of our shoes because they were both on the beach. They would have got pulled back in by the water. So, I mean, tide changes. <laughs> this comment about gentle tide, I mean, go swim when the tide's strong and see what it's like. Tell you what, I haven't been swimming in the ocean as a drunk man since. And for you young people, you know, let my story be case in point. You don't want to do what I did. I felt real fortunate to be alive that day by the time I got back to the shore. <laughs> then you're actually blinded. Stop playing ball and get back to what you know. <laughs> well, I know a lot of things, you know. I knew a lot about a lot of things before I knew about Gematria. The reason I found Gematria is because pretty intelligent. Uncovering these crooks who lie about everything, including where we live. I mean, so she doesn't understand. I mean, I don't know when she started seeking truth or when she found my work, but I've been exposing the flat earth since it started summer of 2015 because, again, it's the most detrimental thing to the truth community. I, 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 I'm amazed by how many people have been taken by the flat earth theory, and because it's so many people, it's why I've put in time to fight it. Because I said, oh my God. I mean... My goal is to raise enough awake people so that we can go and accomplish things in this world. If we're going to show up in places to get things done and conversations are going to break out about the earth being flat, you know, they're just going to make us all look like Looney Tunes. You're only as strong as your weakest link. And flat earth is making you a lot of very weak and vulnerable links. And th this is what's so annoying about all the flat earthers. They're just so nasty and they attack, you know... In 2015, when I was exposing the Flat Earth Theory, I never really said anything mean to anyone, but I've been taking attacks from Flat Earthers this whole time, and 
it's just pathetic. It's like, um, it's just, you know, it's really dumb people calling people who have intelligence dumb, which is infuriating, you know? <laughs> so many vids, thousands to prove Flat Earth takes a 50 IQ. Okay. <laughs> Apparently you've never been in a car before. So... Flat earthers, you just, you need a lesson in physics, you know. Science is a real thing. And science, when done appropriately, can prove things. The problem is in this world, science has been turned into religion. It's been manipulated. It's been filled with as much bullshit as religion. From, oh God, what's his name? I can't think of it right now. They, the thing that they used, Piltdown Man. Piltdown Man is a perfect example of purposeful fraud within science. If you don't know about Piltdown Man, look it up. 41 years it was used to prove evolution and that the white race was the greatest race, the most intelligent. Piltdown in Gematria equals 41, and the lie existed for 41 years and not coincidentally. It was admitted as a fraud after 41 years of being taught at universities. So people were having to go and pay for university education to learn proof of evolution through Piltdown Man, which was complete bullshit. And the same thing goes on today. And it is because of these things that so many of you think the Earth's flat. You think because there's lies in science from NASA. Most of you probably don't even know about Piltdown Man, but I mean, if you really want to expose fraud in mainstream science, spend your time on the things that you can actually prove and that have been admitted, like Piltdown Man. And NASA's easy to expose too. But then taking your misunderstanding of physics in this world and using that to say the earth is flat, that's where you're fucking it up. And that's where you need to stop. None of you can prove that the earth is flat because it isn't. And all of you who are saying the earth is flat, you choose to use cognitive dissonance to support your argument. That's why you don't care that there's no evidence of the ice wall. None of you care about that evidence that there's no pictures, there's no documentation of this ice wall that you've all chosen to believe in. You're happy to believe that there's an ice wall containing the waters of a flat earth. But at the same time, you'll say, well, NASA hasn't shown me a real picture of the spherical earth, so I don't believe it. You don't need NASA to show you any pictures to prove that the earth's a sphere. Okay? And you just need to use your brain <laughs> so you don't say things like this when Aaron's writing. All right. Please, flat earthers, just stop, okay? You guys can't counter any points that I'm making. Nobody has countered a single point that I made in a video. You guys just keep introducing more bullshit, you know? The guy yesterday who was spamming everywhere that it's atmospheric refraction... After I exposed that it's not atmospheric refraction, then he started spamming everywhere. Well, then what's wrong with the curvature map? The curvature map mathematics don't make sense. Man, I don't give a fuck about some curvature map. I don't even know what you're talking about. All that matters is the Earth is curved. And it's provable. Also, more incredible evidence that the Earth is not flat are the stars in the sky. You know? Just notice how flat earthers argue. They do not address anything that disproves flat earth. They, they just introduce more bullshit, more illogical arguments. And, and that's why it seems that they're trolls. But sadly, I know that a lot of these people aren't trolls. They're people that really think the earth is flat. And I know that I'm not wasting my time completely because I have pulled a lot of people out of the flat earth psyop. You know? So... Aaron, you're going to be pulled out next, okay? I'm throwing you the life jacket so you can stop with this nonsense. And this guy right here is upset because I said, Look, man, if you're going to tell me the Earth's flat, I'm going to write you off as a retard. I'm not here to be nice to you. I'm here to help you guys find the truth, empower you with knowledge. And all of you who are going for this flat Earth, you've been sucked in by the same tyrants, the same liars, that do all this other stuff that I expose. That is why the Flat Earth card is in the Illuminati card deck. That same card deck that has 9-11 in it, 
the BP Gulf oil spill, a bunch of these false flag shootings. You think they put the flat earth in there because the earth's flat? This was their, you know, the card they were saving up their hand that they, they knew they could divide the truth community over with. And the reason why is the same thing I knew about this truth community before the flat earth psyop even came. A lot of you are Bible thumpers. And almost all of you who believe the earth is flat, you know, you believe that because some Bible verses make it seem that the earth is, you know, something other than what we've come to discover through science. And realize not all science is bad. Okay? Not all science is bad. Science and spirituality aren't supposed to be separate things. The same people who control religion are the same people who control mainstream science. And they use it to divide people. Just like this flat earth thing is being purposefully interjected into a community to divide them. You know? Those of you following people like Jaronism, Jaronism proved he's a fucking retard last year. He called me up on the phone. And it, could, it was like life was trying to show him something. Jaronism calls me up on the phone. And he goes, why are you making all these bullshit videos saying that the news is faking information about plane crashes? I said, well, it's not bullshit. They are doing it to scare people because they know people have phobia over that. And literally while we were on the phone, and I had been explaining to him in the conversation how, you know, how these examples of plane crashes in the news are all by a code. And literally, while he was on the phone, the breaking news was the plane crash somewhere in the Middle East. Supposedly, this pop singer from the Middle East died in the plane crash. And it was all perfectly synced up with the Gematria plane crash, the measurement from the pop singer's birthday. And I said to him, I said, see, there you go, Jaronism. I said, there's another perfect example of a fake plane crash in the media by the co. And he goes, and he just ignored it. He just didn't want to talk about it. Because he's not here for truth. He doesn't give a shit about the truth. He cares about getting paid for shilling on. 